And hello viewers, welcome to our program uh, Rabta, which means connection, so we're here to connect with you. And I have my two assistants with me again. My name is Robert Slack, I'm your host, and I'm here to share the Word of God with you and to answer some of the questions that you may have concerning the Word of God and life. That's why we're here. So, at the end of last program, we were talking about uh, the devil uh, and explaining that God does not use the devil. He's not a servant of God, you know, but he works his own works uh, from his kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, which is opposed to God's kingdom, the kingdom of light. But as a child of God, if you are a believer and a child of God, then you do not need to be afraid because we have overcome him. And as the Bible says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's Jesus. Okay, uh, I think the girls have some more questions now. We do, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you may go first. <laughs> yes, okay, so I had a question about um, uh, God coming to the earth for judgment. Yeah. Because you said there, um, uh, that devil will be uh, thrown into a fire where he should be burned down. So yeah. does that mean that there is no hell right now? but it will be created when he will be thrown into, uh, into the fire? Yeah. Uh, I think that the hell is there now. Mm -hmm. uh, because that was created by God, not, not for people, but it was originally created for the devil and the angels that followed him. Okay. But uh, those who choose not to follow God and uh, to believe the devil's lies, they will also accompany him. Um, there are two distinct uh, events here. Now, this is where, uh, at the return of Christ, where the um, we see here, um, I'll read in chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, and we can read from verse uh, 19. This is when Jesus comes and it says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat upon the horse and against his army. That's against Christ you know, and those who come with him, his believers with him. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet, who performed signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. And that is forever. That is acting like hell. And he says, The rest were killed with the sword, which came from the mouth of him who sat upon the throne, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Now, and it says here, and continuing on, and I saw, in chapter 20, and I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss, and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he should not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. So this is the first event that we have here. When Christ returns uh, with his army, the believers from heaven, he come down, he conquers the earth, the Antichrist and the beast and all those who serve him are done away with. They receive their judgment. They go, and we see here the devil is also bound. Eh? He's chained up and he's thrown into the abyss. It's like a big pit. And he's shut up there for 1,000 years, it says. After that 1,000 years, he's released for a short time. And what does he do? He's, he does his same trade. He goes out and deceives all the nations of the earth. And so they rise up against the Lord, you know who's been ruling over the earth for that 1,000 years. And we see, read here uh, a little bit further in chapter 20. And it says here, um, And the devil who deceived them, deceived the nations, was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that is the end of the devil. That's when he gets cast into hell. So have you got that now? We have to see it like a timeline. Yeah. You know, we're progressing towards the time when Jesus returns. 
At that moment, there was a, sort of a certain judgment that takes place with the, for the beast and the false prophet and those who follow them, and also the devil. He's locked up, and then for, for a thousand years, and then after that, when Christ reigns upon the earth with his followers, at the end of that thousand years, the devil is released again, and he also deceives the nations again, and they come and rebel against the Lord. The rebellion is put down, and the devil then is thrown into the lake of fire that burns forever and ever. That's his end. That's his destination. Mm. That's where he's heading. Yeah? Yeah. Is that thank a clear you. answer for you? Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. I also have a question because uh, a lot of people, I've learned, heard a lot of people saying about there is a place underwater when you die, all, all the souls go there and they wait till the day of judgment and then they will be released. It doesn't matter whether you did everything good in your life or you were a great sinner. doesn't matter. You all go to the same place and at the end of this world, at the, end, at the day of the yeah. judgment, they, uh, then you will be released and then God will decide you go to heaven or hell. But is it, yeah, it's, it's a little... Partly true. Okay. Partly yeah. true. Okay. Um, let me say, this. there is no one in hell at the moment. Okay. No, there's no one there. The Bible, uh, or Jesus, he talked about Hades. It was a place of the dead. But that was divided, like in, up till that time, it was divided into two parts. You had Hades, that is where people were in torment, and you had paradise. You know, we can see that. Um, Jesus explains that. Um, We'll let the Bible speak for itself. In Luke, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, um, I have to find this one now. It's when Jesus is ta he tells this uh, story. It's, it's not a parable, it's a true story. He talks about Lazarus, and the rich man. Do you remember that story? Mm -hmm. You know, Lazarus, uh, I can't just find the reference at the moment, but um, Lazarus, he was a very poor person. He was a beggar and he was also sick. He had a lot of wounds on his body and they used to carry him. And every day they would lay him at the gate of this house of this rich man, a very rich man. And he was always uh, feasting and he was having a party every day, really enjoying life. He didn't care about Lazarus at all. You know, he was just focused on himself, you know. And um, so what happened was they both died. Now, the Bible says that when Lazarus died, he was carried away into Abraham's bosom. He went to paradise. They call that paradise mm -hmm. then. Uh, he didn't go to heaven. He was in paradise. Now, when uh, the rich man died, he came into Hades. You know, that's the place of torment, you know. And he looked up. He said he looked up from there. And he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and he asked Abraham, he said, will you send Lazarus to come down and just put a bit of water on my tongue, you know? He said, no. Abraham explains and he says, no, I cannot do that, you know, because there is a great chasm between us mm -hmm. and no one can cross from here to there and you cannot cross from there to here. You know, so there is a separation there. And um, so then he asked if he will send him to his brothers, you know, to tell them so that they don't come in the, this place as well of torment. And he said, no, I, I can't do that. He says, they have Moses. The scriptures are read every day, you know, or every week in the synagogues, they're read. You know, so let him listen to them, you know. And uh, he says, well, no, unless... But if they see someone come from the dead, they will believe. He says, look, if they don't believe the scriptures, they won't believe it if someone comes back from the dead. Yeah, you know? exactly. So um, in that story, Jesus explains that uh, in that realm, it is the vision of those who have, uh, we could say, who are saved, who are in this place, are waiting, and also those who are not, who are in heaven. Now, that changed when Jesus died and was resurrected. Why? And they had to wait until this moment. Why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is the firstborn of the dead. So Jesus 
had to be resurrected before and go to heaven before anyone else could. So they were waiting there. But now those then who were in paradise, they are awakened and they have gone to heaven okay. to be with the Lord. But they had to wait until Jesus because he was the firstborn of the dead. Now the Bible even uh, talks about that. It says, um, I'm not sure if I can find it, just uh, so we, that when Jesus rose uh, up from the dead, uh, that there were many uh, who came out of their graves in Jerusalem and went around and people were seen by people in those times before they went to heaven. Now, uh, they were waiting, of course, until Jesus was resurrected. Mm -hmm. Then that opened the way for them also to go to heaven. So now we only have like believers who end up in heaven and those who are unbelievers who end up in Hades awaiting the time of judgment. Oh, now, okay. then we get in, yeah, we're talking about judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we read about that in Revelation as well, you know, and um, where the books are opened. Um, let me just find this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in Revelation 20 again, chapter 20. And we'll read from verse 11. Eh? This follows on what was when the, the, um, the, the devil is cast into the lake of fire. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from whose presence the earth and heaven fled away, with no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Eh? And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Okay. And the dead were judged from the things that were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up their dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. And death and Hades were then thrown into the lake of fire. He says, this is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So what it boils down to, it didn't matter what you did in your life, what for deeds you've done, if your name wasn't written in that book of life, in other words, if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, then you're going to hell. That's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. So that is the judgment that takes place, you know. So uh, uh, as believers, for believers, there will also a judgment, be a judgment that will take place. And we will be judged, not for our salvation, not whether you go to hell or not, but we'll be judged on the basis of what we have done in our lives, mm -hmm. the works that we have done. You know, Paul refers to that in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 3, um, maybe we can read that. Um, he said, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we we'll read from verse 11. He says, For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds upon the foundation with gold, silver, or precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident. You know, that's what we're doing here. Yeah? For the day will show it, because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. Did we work in faith? Mm -hmm. Are we being obedient to God? If any man's work which he has built upon it remains, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work is burned up, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as through fire. You know, so there will come a judgment and that's, uh, we're judged on the basis of what have we done? What works have we done? You know, and uh, because they will term, that will determine the sort of reward that we receive in heaven. Uh, in chapter 15, Paul talks about the resurrection from the dead, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and then he talks about the stars in heaven and they differ from glory to glory. You know, so 
one person's reward is going to be very dif different to another person's reward, depending on how faithful they have been to God. You know, it's, um, it's like a story I heard once. Uh, some a man was for an illustration. It was a man he he got to heaven, and he was looking for his mansion. And the angel brought him to this old shack. You know. The, you know, just about almost fallen down old shack. And he said, what's this now? You know, I should get a mansion. And the angel said to him, well, this is all you gave us to work with. In other words, like according to his faithfulness and the things that he had done, mm -hmm. that will determine, like his glory, you know, the place of the mansion where he will live or whatever, you know. And so if we're not doing much, it'll be like this person, you know, you're building a wood or hay or stuff, or things that have just been burnt up. You... you not going to receive a reward mm -hmm. except for your salvation. It's like you get through, like we say, by the skin of your teeth. You're saved, mm -hmm. but that's it. Um, While well, other people who have been like, like someone like Paul, you know, he, he says, you know, uh, because of his faithfulness, I'm sure, you know, he's living in a big mansion there in heaven, I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so God will reward us according to our faithfulness. Yeah. I so the scripture you explained before about that um, the the reward and the God will judge you about um, with the with the, the thing according that, to what we have done what we uh, have done right. and if we believed in God or not yeah, yeah? The, whether you sinned or not you you did good things that that doesn't matter at the end you believed God that, that's what mattered that's what I understood is it is it. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have we have sort of like two judgments. Mm -hmm. We have the one where uh, uh, a judgment of unbelievers, mm -hmm. you know, and they're judged according to all of their works. But if their name's not found in the book of life, mm -hmm. which it won't be because they didn't believe, mm -hmm. they go to the lake of fire. Okay. But then we also have a judgment that is for believers, and in that judgment we are judged on the basis, like Paul says here, of our works. What have we done? Mm -hmm. You know, what have we done? with what God has given us. Have we been faithful servants? You know, Jesus made, um, he talked about that in Matthew 20, chapter 25, the par different parables that he talked about. The parable of the talents, for example. You know, he gave uh, one five talents, another one two, and another yeah. one one. Mm -hmm. and then he went away and he came back and he judged them according to what they had done with what he had given them. See, so God will judge us in that same way. He's going to say, well, what have you done with what I have given you? See, okay. have you been faithful? Have you used what I have given you? See, because when we use something as God's kingdom, it increases. You mm -hmm. see that in the, par in the parable, the one who had uh, five, he made ten. Yeah? Another one had two, he ended up with five or something. Mm -hmm. The fellow with one, he hid it. Because he said, I knew you were a hard master, you know, and yeah. you, you reap where you didn't sow, you know, and you harvested where, you know, uh, where a place where it wasn't yours. But that's not true. That was his image of God. Mm -hmm. And God's, so God said, well, if you look at me like that, I'm going to judge you according to that. And he was cast out. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't make it. Because I've heard that for whether you do good or bad, every th the, the results you will get on the earth. So if you're doing good, you will receive good on the earth. And if you're doing bad, you will receive bad on the earth. When you go in he heaven, God will only ask you, you did this, you did this, you did this. And then uh, the judgment will be done. Like you believed in me, you um, said sorry and then it's over but as i understand now you will have to go through the consequences what you have done whether it's good or bad yeah uh maybe i can explain it better this way say uh look the judgment that takes place for believers the judgment in heaven mm -hmm. that's more about rewards mm -hmm. the reward that we receive from god according to our faithfulness according to what we have done in his kingdom with what he has given us. Because you see, in those parables of Jesus, the master, he gave something. He gave it to his servants before he went away. So God has given us things, gifts, talents, that he expects us to use in his kingdom. 
And so we will be judged upon that. You know, we're not judged on whether we're going to be saved or not, mm -hmm. because otherwise we wouldn't get into heaven, you know, because we're saved by the blood of Jesus. That's God's grace. We didn't deserve it, but just because of his grace and through our response in faith, we receive our salvation, you know, saved from our sins. We receive forgiveness of sins. We receive the righteousness of God. So that's, that's settled. We're mm -hmm. not judged on that. You know, okay. it's, it's jud a judgment that comes on the basis of uh, our rewards, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then how does it work for the uh, ones who are not believers? Well, that's what we read in, uh, in Revelation chapter 20 there, when the books were opened and they're yeah. judged according, according to their deeds, mm. you know. But no one is righteous before God on the basis of what he has done. Yeah. Even we. You know, as a believer, I'm not righteous before God because of anything that I have done. Mm -hmm. I'm only righteous before God on the basis of my faith in what Jesus has done for me. Okay. See, because of my faith in, in what Jesus has done, God reckons me as being righteous. He gives me his righteousness. Mm -hmm. okay. Because the Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags in God's sight. Mm -hmm. You know, so... We can never be good enough no. for God. See, that's what a lot of people who do not believe in Jesus, they believe that it will be okay when they die, you know, because they, they believe they're basically a good person. But they are not, no. you know. We are not good. Mm -hmm. You know, when there was a rich young uh, man who came to Jesus and asked, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, you know, he, he called Jesus good teacher. And mm -hmm. Jesus said, why are you calling me good? He said, there's no one good but God alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and he went on to explain, you know, to keep all the commands. But man, he did that, but he missed out on one thing. He was attached to all his possessions, you know, instead of being attached to God. Mm -hmm. But we've come to the end of our program again, so we'll have to close off now. And... But remember, if you have any questions about anything we've been talking about, please write to us and give us your questions and we'll try and answer those in one of our future programs. So thank you for watching. God bless you. Until next time, just remember that Jesus is Lord. Do not forget to like the video, subscribe BTL TV and press the bell icon to receive notifications. Jesus is the light of the world.